When using a wireless network, it can be very useful to know how strong your wireless connection is. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how from a computer running macOS, we can check the quality of our wireless connection. As you can see, our computer is already connected to a wireless access point. However, if we press and hold down the option key on our keyboard, and then select the Wi-Fi icon, rather than a list of wireless access points that we can connect to, we're shown additional information about the wireless connection that our computer has made with our wireless access point. The first piece of information that we're presented with displays the name and MAC address of the wireless card that our computer is using. Then under Preferred Networks, we have a list of wireless networks we previously connected to, along with the wireless network that we're currently connected with. Directly underneath the wireless network that we're currently connected to, we then have information about that wireless connection. First, we have the IP address that our wireless network has assigned to our computer. We then have the IP address of the wireless router that we're connected to, along with the type of wireless security that it is using. BSSID, or Basic Service Set Identifier, is the unique MAC address for the wireless connection that our computer is connected to. Next, we have Channel, which displays the current wireless channel that our computer is using to connect to our wireless network. RSSI, or Received Signal Strength Indicator, tells us how strong the wireless signal is to our wireless network. Rather confusingly, RSSI is measured using negative numbers, which means that the closer a number is to zero, the better the wireless signal is. So as an example, if we have an RSSI of minus 90, that would indicate that we have a wireless connection that would be on the verge of being unusable. However, an RSSI of minus 30 would indicate that we have a maximum wireless signal, which, while very unlikely, might be achievable if our computer is very close to our wireless access point. This means that RSSI works within a range, so ideally we should be looking for an RSSI signal of between minus 67 and minus 80, as anything within this range should provide us with a reliable internet connection. The next value listed is noise, which is a measurement of the amount of background noise or interference that our wireless signal is receiving from within our environment. Once again, noise is measured using a negative range, so the closer a value is to zero, the higher the level of background noise, which makes noise an important value to monitor as it will affect the speed and performance of our wireless connection. In order to work out the quality of our wireless connection, we need to calculate something called signal-to-noise ratio. Signal-to-noise ratio is the amount of interference that is affecting our wireless connection, and is simply a case of subtracting the value in RSSI from the value in noise. Ideally, we need our signal-to-noise ratio to be between 15 and 25, as this will give us what is considered to be an average wireless connection for basic internet activities. If you're lucky enough to get a score above 25, you will have an ideal signal-to-noise ratio, with a wireless connection that will be good for video conferencing, movie streaming and large file transfers. However, if you find that your signal-to-noise ratio is below 14, you can try to improve your wireless connection by removing wireless background noise. This might include moving your router away from noisy devices such as televisions, microwave ovens and other electronic devices, or changing the signal that your wireless router is transmitting on. TX rate is how fast the router that we're connected to is able to transfer data. So as a minimum, this number should be higher than the speed of your internet connection. So for example, our internet connection is 32 megabits per second which because our TX rate is higher, means that when we browse the internet from this computer, we're able to use the full speed of our internet connection. However, if we were to transfer files from one computer to another, or we needed to make a backup over Wi-Fi, ideally we need our TX rate to be a lot higher. As you can see, our TX rate is currently fluctuating between 80 and 62 megabits per second. So while this is not an ideal score, we are still able to wirelessly transfer a one gigabyte file over our home network in roughly one minute. Finally, we have PHY mode, which simply informs us of the type of wireless connection that we're using. While 802.11 
is the old designation used for different Wi-Fi standards, recently these Wi-Fi designations were simplified so 802.11g is now Wi-Fi 3, 802.11n is Wi-Fi 4, 802.11ac is Wi-Fi 5, and 802.11ax is Wi-Fi 6. This makes PHY mode a simple method for determining the type of wireless network your computer is connected to. However, just like the other pieces of information that we're being presented with, PHY can be used to help us to identify what sorts of data transfer speeds we can expect from the wireless network that we're connected to.